Hello, this is Branto from the uh, Friend Minute Squadron, and today I'm going to be attempting to show you how to make um, make your own test chambers in Portal 2. So at the start, you'll just um, create test chambers. You probably want to do a new chamber unless you have quite a few before that you've made. Now, the trick with creating a test chamber is to have a, a flow of what you want to what you want the people to do. So you can think about it in your head, just, or just draw it on a sheet of paper. Either way works, but. Every line indicates something you have to do before something else can happen. So let's say you have to push a button before you open the door. I mean, that's obviously quite a simple one, but this could take the form of anything. And when you've thought about this sort of system, you can uh, you can replace the lines with um, different game mechanics. Now, these game mechanics are becoming quite common, such as the pushing the button um, example. Or they can be reasonably complex, like some of the ones I'm about to show you. Okay, so this is the first game mechanic I'm going to show you. Um, it's quite simple. Um, the turrets are blocking the door unless you just happen to be uh, fast enough to get through. Which I guess isn't, isn't too hard to do in this example, but um, the aim of this particular one is to get rid of the, all the turrets. Um, yeah, and I'll just show you how to do that. Obviously, the first time you make a puzzle, um, it has to build it. So it has to do all the lighting and um, check like, what you can see or not. And for a complicated test terms, this can take quite a long time. Later I'll show you a trick to cut down this time if you've already made your map and have made large changes to it. Okay, so this chamber is, this test chamber is quite dark. Um, you probably want to put more lights in it. But the trick for this one is to... Um, probably won't work too well. No more turrets. Yeah, this test this test chamber does need a little work, and the tractor beam comes across the laser, which makes it quite difficult to get through. Well, not really. I'll just deal with this turret. I don't want to go in. Yeah, so that was probably the first game mechanic. I'll go and show you some more, some more later after I've shown you a few tricks to speed up the um, making of the test chambers. Now most of you will probably already know these tricks if you played around with the uh, test chamber construction before. But um, yeah, I'll just show you them. Now, to do anything you can just open up the context menu for a surface that you highlight. You highlight by dragging the mouse over things. You can highlight cubes or um, flat surfaces. If you highlight a cube, there'll be these little um, these little drag drag things on the side, which you can change the selection size, like that. If you want to change whether you can whether the surface is portable or not, obviously you can open up the context menu, and it will show you a little um, uh, keyboard shortcut. It's quite useful to learn all of these keyboard shortcuts. It's like you can um, you can fill them in or just uh, unfill them. You can make all the surfaces portable or not portable. Um, there are quite a few more keyboard shortcuts. No, that's seen. That's seen here. Um, for all of anything that has an input and output, you can um, use the connect tool to connect them together. No, don't have any. Don't have any inputs. Yeah, this is a bit of a bug. If you uh, click on the contact, if you put an item in while doing that, it will it will be a bit buggy. And with a tractor beam, you can either change whether it's on or not, or change its um, direction. Any of you who play Portal 2 will probably know about this. Um, buttons usually have timers on them. See this timer here? Yeah. You put it down below 3, it goes to infinity, which is useful if you just want to turn it off and on. Um, you can see what it's connected to by the little heart symbol. And you can change how it's visible. So if you if you have a lot of connections, you probably want to do the, uh, the signage one. But if it's not, it probably looks nice to use the end line. Uh, other things that can take an input are the light bridges, uh, the uh, stairs things, uh, the fizzlers, they can also take an input. They're exactly the same as the laser field, as I'll show you later. <coughs> and the angle panels, the, and the flip panels, and the glass panels all work pretty much the same, but they all take an input. So I'll just show one there. And to rotate items, you um, hold down this rotate thing here. You can just rotate it, snap through 90 degrees. Rotating turrets is mostly the same, but if you hold down shift, it'll snap it like this, instead of being like this. It makes it slightly easier to make your uh, maps more manageable. For the cubes, um, when you first put it in, it'll be like this. You'll have a dropper. 
um, you can either to auto drop the first cube or no, I'll let you guys read those. But um, you can change the cube type. Uh, you've probably met all of these in the in the game if you've played through it, which I highly recommend because it is a fantastic game. Um, most of these droppers also need a connection, so um, just connect them like that. Now, since that outline's quite, um, it doesn't look too nice. I'll probably make that one a signage or a nun. See, there's a little square sign. There'll be a little square sign there. Um, yeah. Now to fix that, to fix that, um, the tractor beam go through the portal. You have to know about the properties. So. I think, if I remember, um, tractor beams can't go through glass. So if I just put a glass beam there, the laser beam will go, be able to go through it. But that'll stop the um, the portal being made. So I'll just rotate it like this. I mean, it's not exactly a proper test chamber, is it? Now this switch to game view button allows you to quickly go into your test chamber. But it's not your current view, as it says there, the most helpful message. So if you just click the rebuild button, it will go through the slow stage of like, uh, calculating all the geometry and stuff like that. You have to do this every time you change something. If you just want to go through it again, you just click the eyeball button. Ah, it's a bit messy. <laughs> so least. Oh, two tractor beams now. Could be a problem. With it. Anyway, so um, so do that. Yes, yeah, so all the other items we put in could cause a few issues. Got rid of one of them. Yeah, so that's how you uh, make test chambers. Yeah, the save menu's pretty much normal. You just provide us a description and a name. Just, um, it's all breaking stuff. If you want to publish it, you go to a um, test you already want uh, done, like one of these. Uh, what's this? No. Okay. Um, of course, it'll take a while to load previous test chambers. Well, not that long for this one, at least. It looks quite simple. Uh, you can publish it by clicking that button. Um, oh, a quick way to enter the game viewers tab, I forgot to mention that one. Uh, I haven't covered cooperative puzzles because I don't usually make them too much. I'll probably make a video on those later as soon as I learn all the tricks in them. Right, so um, this is the uh, second game mechanic I'm going to show you. It's. Um, when a tractor beam pushes a cube up against a refractive cube up against a grate, um, the edge that the laser comes out tries to orientate it towards orientate itself towards the grate. Generally, I mean, if if it's uh, on diagonal like this, it does have a hard time working it out. <clears throat> but it will generally try and orientate itself. This can be used to um, create useful um, tricks that people may not get, and also makes it a lot easier. So when I was first creating this puzzle, I thought it would be a little too hard because of the um, because of the fiddliness I thought would occur trying to get the cube to appear. So on to the next one. So um, this is a uh, another trick you can use. The uh, tractor beam can help to hold a cube into a button if the um, if the cube is quite fiddly to um, move there. For instance, in a situation like this where it's hit there by a um, moving platform. Uh, this one isn't really a trick, but it, I guess it's still worthy of um, notice. If a um, ball goes into a portal, it'll come out um, at a different angle. This can be used like um, cause things that's quite difficult to think of. Like it could be it could be tricky to work out what angle a ball would come out of that particular orange portal. Angled light angled light bridges are another trick you can use um, when when a light bridge hits an angled surface. It'll come out of a flat surface at an angle. It's all pretty basic stuff, but it can all help. And that ball will get quite a bit of momentum going in. So if you can time it right, which I probably won't. Yes. Yeah, um, you can get it to fly out of a wall. Yeah, like that. And if it hit the button, things would happen. Yeah. On to the next one. Okay, so... Um, if there are two signals connecting to one single thing, like like for example um, that dot there and um, that button there, um, both of them need to happen for it to work. So it'll need to find a way to hit that laser beam. I'm having trouble hitting it. 
like that. And this causes uh, the cube to drop down and onto another button. Okay, so this is another one of those um, game mechanics. This time the um, refracting cube is on top of an angle panel, so at just the correct angle, so that when a laser beam hits it, it'll trigger a um, laser collector. Um, this is often quite a tricky thing for people to spot, and they don't often use it. Particularly in this map, because there's actually a glitch where you can place a portal up in this corner, and it will still trigger that, which I probably need to get rid of. Yeah, another game mechanic you can use is the fact that you can stand on top of buttons. It can make places accessible that were um, ordinary inaccessible. So this particular map would be impossible without this healthy placed button. Even with the button, it's still pretty hard. Especially with some of my lack of skill. Another useful tool is the um, is logic gates, which can be made using lasers and uh, laser collectors. Um, these, you can cause this to um, create like flip-flops and end gates and all gates, which would otherwise be impossible. Uh, one, this, these end gates, oh, these flip-flops are made, um, the central laser collector is linked to one laser in an on and one laser in an off, and they come in pairs, like this one is, I have this one right. Yeah, sorry, they don't come in pairs, one now I'm about. Um, yeah, one laser re turns off the other, and the other laser turns off the other. And once it's been set by a mechanism like uh, this bit over here, um, it will it will stop flashing. Yeah, you have you have to set them to start with, otherwise they'll all flicker on and off. Unlike Minecraft Redstone, which is a lot more well behaved. And you can do quite awesome things with this. Like I'm using it for this one to make a code lock door. We have to flip all these panels to make the correct pattern to open the door. Um, some people use them to make calculators and things like that. It's all pretty awesome. Uh, yeah, another useful tool is the uh, these spy cubes, which you encounter about halfway through the actual game. They will walk towards you whenever you place them, as long as they don't get scared, which happens when they get hot and buttons so they don't walk off. You can use them to walk to a place that would otherwise be inaccessible if you place them correctly. So I don't think I did in this particular example. No, just run off. Yeah, so they can be used to uh, trigger buttons, such as the button down that hole. If you want to access things like that um, in your map building, you'll need to use the developer console. You open it with the uh, Tith key, which I will, and you it brings up a developer console. You'll type in SV cheats and one, and then I hope you guys can see this. It's not too small. And then it allows you to fly around without noticing, so you can see anything that's happening. There you go. I mean, you can still be attacked by turrets and things like that. But you can access areas of the map you normally wouldn't be able to access. You can still get killed by um, laser, laser fields, apparently. Yeah, I think that's all of them. So this is uh, Friendly Brand, so I'm signing off. Feel free to um, subscribe to the YouTube channel and check out my maps. I'm sure that, um, those guys on the YouTube channel will be very happy to hear from you. Goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.